Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about SSD or write caching in Windows. So we're going to be going over what it is, how it works, and how to enable it. So if you're looking to gain a little more performance on your hard drive, you might want to give this a shot. So one thing you want to consider maybe is to do some kind of benchmark test with some speed testing software uh, before and after enabling it to see if it's really going to make a difference for you. So there are some risks that go along with it, so you got to keep that in mind. So we're going to be talking about that as well. All right, so what is write caching? So this is a feature where Windows temporarily stores write operations, not read, just write, in system memory or your RAM before writing them to the disk. So this will reduce latency, improves performance, and makes the system feel more responsive. All right, so how does it work? So when it's enabled, data is first stored in your RAM or the SSD's onboard cache. So not all SSDs will have this onboard cache. You know, some of the budget ones are not going to have it, and it's going to rely more on your system memory rather than its onboard cache. So this can improve performance, but there are risks of data loss in the event of a sudden power failure. And that's because if you have this information in RAM and your power goes out before it gets written to the disk, then obviously it's going to be lost. So that's one of the downsides, which we'll get to in a minute here. All right, so how do we configure it? So we're going to actually do this after we go through these slides here. So you go to Device Manager, find your disk drive, right-click on it, and choose Properties. Then you'll have a Policies tab, and you can check the box for Enable Write Caching on the device. And then you'll also see an option to turn off the Windows Write Cache Buffer Flushing option, which we'll talk about when we get there. All right, here are some benefits. So obviously some faster write performance, uh, reduced latency and quicker response times. Better performance for workloads involving frequent small writes. And it can enhance your SSD efficiency by reducing direct write operations. So, of course, there are always some risks when doing something like this. So, like I mentioned before, you could have data loss if the system loses power before the cache data is written to the hard drive. There's a slight chance it could increase wear on your hard drive if it's poorly managed. So if you don't have some kind of UPS or backup power supply, you might not want to do this if you're worried about data loss. And then if you're low on RAM, uh, this might affect it as well because it's going to be using your RAM to store this information before it writes it to the disk. But most computers these days should have enough RAM to handle this. And if you're on some super old computer with just a little bit of RAM, then it's probably not going to help you anyways because the whole system is probably going to be too slow to even notice. All right, and then in some rare cases, write caching can cause data corruption if the SSD or OS doesn't handle cache flushing properly. And then some users also report slower performance in specific apps, such as Steam downloads, when write caching is enabled. So that's one good reason to do a before and after test, just to see if it's going to work for you. All right, then for performance gains, it could provide noticeable performance improvements, especially on SATA SSDs. Then if you have an NVMe or M2 SSD, the gains are smaller since these drives are already very fast, but it can still help with small file write operations. All right, so who should use it? So it's recommended for users with SSDs, better suited for desktops and laptops with reliable power sources. And if you're using it on some kind of system that handles critical data, you might want to think about not using this uh, just to ensure you don't run into a problem with any data loss. All right, so now let's talk about the different types of SSDs. So we have the SATA SSD, so you might still be running one of those. So this will benefit the most from write caching due to slower baseline speeds. And then for NVMe drives, gains are less dramatic, but still useful for multitasking and random writes. And then for M2 SSDs, the behavior can vary depending on whether it's a SATA or NVMe drive. And if you have a, a DRAM, less SSD, Caching can help, but the performance may vary. So on these, they don't have the onboard cache memory, so it has to use your system memory. So these are usually cheaper SSD drives that do not have the onboard cache. All right, so if you still have a spinning disk, then you could actually still enable this. And it can boost performance, but carries higher risk of data if there's a loss of power, if it's interrupted. But if you have a UPS, it should be okay. And then if you have a laptop, it should be okay too, since that has a battery backup, technically. All right, so now let's go over to a computer here and try this out and see how it's enabled. All right, let's open up Device Manager by typing in Device Manager here. All right, so we'll find our disk drives here. 
So I'll right click on the one we want to apply it to. This one has two drives. Go to Properties, Policies. So here's the box to enable write caching on the device. So one thing to keep in mind when enabling write caching is that you need to have the better performance default option set here under removal policy. So this makes you use the safely remove hardware icon when you are removing the drive. But if it's an internal drive, you're not going to have to worry about that because you're not going to be you know, removing it on a regular basis. You can just check the box here, and then this will highlight this box here. So you probably want to leave this disabled here for the write cache buffer flushing, unless you have some type of battery backup you know, or a laptop with its own battery. Because what this will do is it will allow Windows to delay uh, writing the information to the hard drive. And if you have some kind of power failure or other issue, then you have a greater chance of losing the data if you don't have some kind of battery backup. But then again, if it's some other issue besides a power loss, a battery is not going to help you, obviously. So this is up to you if you want to turn this off or on. Then once you have everything set, just click on OK. Then you might have to reboot if it tells you to reboot. And then after that, you could see how it works. All right, so one thing I will say, there are mixed opinions on whether you should use this or not, or if it really makes that big of a difference. But like I said, if you have a way to test your drive before and after, uh, you could give it a shot and see how it works for you. All right, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe.